The map in Goat Simulator reminds me a lot of the user-made amateur maps you'd see for Unreal Tournament or Quake 3. The ones where the mapper would just recreate something that looks like their own street or their own town. Which is cute, but real locations aren't designed for good gameplay. So you'd have this running undercurrent of creepy nonsense in there. Some kind of uneasy contrast between the familiar environment and its unfamiliar emptiness, or the robotic, zombie-like pedestrians populating it. Come to think of it, that's also the vibe that the professional-made Tony Hawk levels gave off. That's the weird balance between amateur and professional qualities that Goat Simulator has to deal with. It clearly wasn't designed to be an actual commercial release. It's a playful test level cobbled together during a company game jam, but it had to be spruced up to somehow justify the $10 price tag, and to make customers happy. Because they didn't expect this game to have customers. They didn't expect this game to happen at all. They literally tossed the idea out nine weeks ago, and 23,000 people were like, yeah, Goat Simulator! Later. That would be awesome! We live in interesting times, my friends. Although Goat Simulator might feel like it's blazing on a frontier of clever wit, the parody simulator joke has been done countless times before. And maybe that's because the simulator genre itself has steadily become a joke of itself. I totally understand the appeal of flight simulators, because I mean, planes are just rad. How the hell do you not get excited about traveling 30,000 feet in the air inside of a giant metal tube cramped full of people? I don't know about you, but for some reason, I think planes are just the coolest thing ever! In the early 2000s, train simulators started to come out, and while I'm not one of them, I know a lot of people out there think trains are just the coolest thing ever, so I can dig that. But over the past, say, five years, the edutainment and job training people got wind of this whole simulator thing, and now things like street cleaning simulator and forklift simulator and woodcutter simulator are coming out. We've gotten to a point where warehouse and logistics simulator is actually a thing. These games look and sound awfully silly, so of course people are going to make jokes about how silly they are. And so now on the freeware scene, you see a lot of stuff like Room Simulator and Sitting Simulator and Goat Petting Simulator. But unlike those, Goat Simulator itself is a commercial product made by developers who have years of experience and a bit of capital to spend on this project. So, what we ended up getting is a $10 minigame novelty about flopping a terrifyingly destructive goat around and scoring points by knocking shit over. It parodies the glitches, the surreal physics, the utilitarian level design, the absent-minded pedestrians, and even the white slanted font of simulator games, while also providing a handful of surprises of its own. And by handful, I mean a literal handful. Five surprises or less, depending on how easily surprised you are. Despite being a fundamentally goalless and cathartic comedy game, Goat Simulator has a scoring system. The crashes and the chaos that your goat performs are numerically rated, which is a rating that actually takes the backseat compared to how many giggles and laughs those same moves elicit. Goat Simulator also has objectives. It has a constantly updating checklist of challenges to complete, and unfortunately a few of them task you with passing high scores. The problem with that is that without a time limit or some kind of failure state, there's really no challenge to passing those scores. You end up just walking into crowded areas and clicking over and over again to ramp up that score multiplier. Once that multiplier passes 20 or so, the game starts playing the music from that one pre-release trailer that displayed a certain quote that makes it obvious what they're doing with this game. Goat Simulator is not just trying to appeal to people who want to giggle at a stupid goat flopping around. They're trying to appeal to the Let's Players, and why wouldn't they? After all, this kind of physics sandbox has really worked with that format before. Octodad was a hit, Happy Wheels was a hit, Surgeon Simulator was a hit, and it was pretty much the same joke. The slapstick humor and the intentional glitches behind the barely controllable, clumsy characters in these games makes them more fun to watch than to play at least in the classically gamey, kinetically pleasing kind of way. You press some buttons, something unexpected happens, and you giggle at the juxtaposition between what you expected and what actually happened. 
After all, comedy basically is the observation that something is not fitting your expectations or norms. Soon you get bored after realizing that the difficulty behind driving the most basic player actions in these games lessens the potential for the deeply player-driven interactive systems that make for compelling gameplay. That's why they're novelties, that's why they're little mini-games and not fully-fledged, long-lasting things. But since we're living in a bizarrely empathetic version of a cheesy 80s cyberpunk dystopia, kids these days don't want to play games themselves, they want to watch other people play games! That's where the money is. After all, PewDiePie has 25 going on 26 million subscribers. He is the number one YouTube channel across all genres, and his searing quote of approval is emblazoned across the Goat Simulator trailer. When he plays a game, it arguably is getting more exposure than it would through traditional game journalists. This man and his colleagues are pretty much responsible for both the success and the oversaturation of an entire new subgenre of horror games. And while I have a hard time seeing the appeal of his stuff, the reality is that it's just not made for me, or my demographic. After all, who has the time to watch all this stuff, and what kind of an audience finds pretty looking grown males acting stupid to be hilarious? Children do. Tween boys do. Back when I was a kid, the mooks behind Jackass and Tom Green were filling this role, and I guess a few enterprising people of my generation grew up to become PewDiePie and Markiplier. They are media icons, these people have audiences that rival cable television, and they can turn struggling products into bestsellers. And to be honest, I'm kind of thankful that the top spot on YouTube is going to someone who's pushing indie and low-budget games development rather than Mountain Dew and Doritos. Because it could be way worse, and we may already be riding a slippery slope towards whatever's worse. Media also keeps us mentally stimulated, relaxed, entertained, and it has social utility. The media helps address our basic human need to connect with others. It gives us something to talk about with one another, and in some extreme cases, a few people end up using media to help overcome loneliness. You might even know a few people who develop parasocial relationships, in which they develop feelings of emotional attachment to complete strangers they've only seen in the media. And that is what Goat Simulator is designed to do. It was made to be funny, and it was made to be especially funny for the audience of YouTube personalities who will drive its sales. Much like the mutually beneficial relationship between yourself and the bacteria that live in your intestines, Goat Simulator and Let's Players can benefit from each other as they entrance kids who watch gameplay videos with their vicarious friends on YouTube. But only the kids who aren't busy or social enough to play games with their real friends. Otherwise, they might notice that playing Goat Simulator alone is an ultimately vapid and pointless experience that becomes a chore very fast. After the first 20 minutes of flopping this goat around, there is only a handful of surprises left. But it could have been something more than just that. With more maps, more modes, and more challenges, and maybe even a Tony Hawk-style unlocking system that actually encourages you to learn how to get high scores efficiently or how to land difficult tricks, Goat Simulator could have actually been a really valuable product, instead of a flaccid joke. But being a valuable product is not what it's supposed to be, and that's not what it wants to be. Otherwise, the joke might be less funny. No one is going to buy Goat Simulator without knowing what they're getting into. Goat Simulator is a completely stupid game, and to be honest, you should probably spend your money on something else, such as a hula hoop, a pile of bricks, or maybe pool your money together with your friends to buy a real goat. At the end of the day, if I gave Goat Simulator either a positive or a negative review, it's not going to stop it from selling a gazillion copies. The marketing behind it is hilarious, there's incredible modding potential, and it would work really well as a quick party game, if you could manage to somehow put it in the living room. So while I would advise that you actually be really careful about buying this game, I kind of think it's nice to see that a product like this can live on the market. Goat Simulator is ultimately a light-hearted, clean joke at the whole game industry itself, and the fact that people were willing to spend money to produce it and that people are willing to spend money to support it might mean that the game industry is more healthy than we tend to make it sound. 
I mean, a goat simulator is the third best-selling game on Steam right now, so they must be doing something right. It's a testament to the viability of creative and unconventional products in a market that actually supports those kind of products. But once the game is actually up and running right in front of your face, once you load it up and actually realize that Goat Simulator really is as dumb and pointless as it was always advertised to be, you'll probably want to do something else. 